Saudi Arabia is undergoing a huge transformation in its healthcare sector. And we are hearing a lot of questions from our client base about those healthcare reforms that are taking place in the kingdom, uh, including perhaps the Saudi uh, Health Council role, the engagement strategies for the clusters and healthcare as well, uh, the localization policies, as well as the expectations for the national health insurance and HTA, the health technology assessment. Can you tell us a little bit um, how we will be talking about all of these different things today? Absolutely. And, and thanks so much for the introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here today. I think we have a lot uh, that we want to talk about in today's webinar. Firstly, I want to look more at the uh, motivations behind uh, healthcare reform, maybe why some of these questions uh, are emerging for our client base. And then uh, secondly, I want to try to take us through one by one uh, what the new structure is going to look like and, and the different entities that we're seeing being impacted by healthcare reform. So that's some familiar faces like the Ministry of Health, NUBCO, as well as some new stakeholders that you mentioned, like healthcare clusters and the HTA Center. And then finally, hopefully we can discuss in a little bit more detail, what are the business implications of these changes on healthcare multinationals, specifically for pharmaceutical, medical device and diagnostics companies? Amazing. Okay, in that case, maybe let's start right at the very top, giving some context about where all of these different questions are coming from. Uh, what is the cause of all this change, perhaps? Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how uh, or what the old health system used to look like? And what are the motivations behind perhaps this huge, enormous reform program? Absolutely. So in terms of uh, what the health structure used to look like, on the public side, we had the Ministry of Health actually as having kind of a triple role. That's why you see it uh, colored in this strange way on the slide. So it was acting as a regulator of the uh, health sector, a payer for healthcare services, as well as a healthcare provider. And of course, uh, we have some other governmental institutions as well, such as National Guard, such as the Ministry of Defense that have their own uh, kind of networks for healthcare provision. And then we have NUPCO, of course, that is uh, supporting on public procurement for the entire public sector. And then on the private side, that was governed by the Center for Health Insurance. And that's the kind of overarching structure of the uh, previous health system. There are, of course, some other regulators in uh, the health sector, like the Saudi Food and Drug Authority, very important uh, market access uh, body for healthcare firms. But there's also a number of other stakeholders that are not necessarily just related to the health sector, like the Ministry of Investment, Expenditures and Efficiencies Authority, National Industrial Development Program. All of those, though, do still have some uh, remit and influence over the healthcare space. And mm -hmm. although this healthcare system was functioning very well, it was providing a very high level of healthcare services. The kingdom did recognize that there were some challenges um, and some need for healthcare reform. The first challenge that they identified was this triple role that the Ministry of Health uh, was undertaking as payer, regulator, and service provider. And basically, they have proposed as a solution to create 20 separate uh, integrated healthcare clusters to support on healthcare provision and to shift the responsibilities of financing to the uh, Center for National Health Insurance. The motivation really behind that is to streamline healthcare processes, improve communication with the market, and to reduce some uh, pressure that might have been seen on the Ministry of Health. The Kingdom also noted there were some questions and challenges over the long-term sustainability of healthcare financing. And to address that, they are now looking at widening uh, funding sources for healthcare, encouraging uptake of private health insurance, and HTA as well is a tool that they can use to make sure they have more cost-effective reimbursement decisions. Another challenge was the lack of public infrastructure to meet quite a rapidly growing uh, demand for healthcare services. And so that's why we've seen now a lot of focus on public-private partnerships, investing in home health care, telemedicine services, which supports patients to access health care outside of the traditional hospital setting, and as well, creating shared services, uh, kind of strategic centralized health care services um, at a national level. And then the final uh, challenge that we saw the kingdom identify was the drug and medical device supply chain was vulnerable to global shocks. And in particular, we saw this happen during the COVID-19 pandemic 
And that's why we've started to see more of an emphasis on localization, in particular, investing in supply chain resilience and supporting domestic manufacturing. Okay, well, I think in fairness, if we can say that this is a long list of different solutions that the kingdom is seeking to implement to address some of those challenges that you're referring to with this whole system. But look, with so many different things that are being targeted, what does this actually mean for the structure of the healthcare sector now? And how exactly will this be different to perhaps what it looks like today compared to what the vision is? Absolutely. So I think just as a reminder, this is the kind of previous original uh, structure of the health sector in Saudi. And then this is what it will look like under this new healthcare reform process. So a lot more uh, complicated. Really, the changes we would want to highlight here is Number one, the Ministry of Health, you'll see, has changed color. We've only colored it in purple here. That's because its role is changing to focus solely really on uh, regulating uh, the healthcare environment. Instead, uh, we have uh, under the Ministry of Health, the Center for National Health Insurance. This is a new stakeholder. They are supporting on healthcare uh, financing and paying for healthcare services. We have the health holding company, we have healthcare clusters, shared services, all of these uh, really supporting on healthcare provision. And then still another of other changes you might have noticed, such as the addition of the Center for Health Technology Assessment. Um, that is another uh, body that's being introduced to support on that long term uh, goal for uh, more sustainable healthcare financing. And we also have a change in Nupco's role. You'll see it has another little arrow pointing to the private sector. And we'll talk in a lot more detail about uh, what that uh, new strategy looks like uh, later on in our discussion. But we also see as well a change in the private sector with the new insurance authority, as well as we've added here the local content and government procurement authority as emerging as an increasingly important regulator for uh, healthcare um, services. So I think maybe what the challenge is for uh, companies who are operating in Saudi Arabia is that a lot of these entities are new and we can see uh, we've highlighted them here in red. So there's a lot of moving parts in healthcare reform, a lot of new uh, stakeholders that are emerging. Companies are really asking, uh, what is the influence? What is the role of these particular bodies in the health sector? And secondly, companies are also finding challenges because the level of development and maturity of some of these stakeholders is, is really differing. So for example, we're seeing a little bit more progression in terms of the development of healthcare clusters than we are with uh, health technology assessment, as an example. Now that is completely normal and to be expected in a healthcare reform of this size, but it does mean that uh, firms are facing some uh, uncertainty about who is the right stakeholder to be engaging with in the medium term. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the final challenge to highlight here is that there are, of course, still some very well-established stakeholders on this uh, chart, like NUCO, the Ministry of Health, Saudi Health Council. So a lot of firms are asking about how are these older, more established entities that they have been working with for a prolonged period of time going to be interacting and working with some of these new bodies here. 